ever made a video talking about exactly why I decided to make some hardware like we made a mouse, a couple of mice, keyboard, and mouse pads. Why did I decide to do that? You know, like, I don't think there were any other YouTube channels at the time who were making products. They were mostly reviewing products and that was seen as almost like, oh no, all the companies who rely on us to review their products are now going to be mad at us. And some of them were, they were like, hey, you're competing with us. I don't care. Like, whatever. I'm not your marketing company. I've had to tell some of the different companies out there that I'm not their marketing company. And I've been shipping all this stuff myself. I'm not going to have a big garage anymore, so I don't have room to ship this. I'm going to have to be doing I'm uh, relying on a third-party fulfillment company, which I don't like. I like doing this myself. It's cool, it's fun. I just don't have the space anymore, and I also plan on moving overseas eventually, which I won't be able to send these products myself. I won't be able to package them and give them the love. So all the hardware right now, 60% off. Just all the Fennec stuff, 60% off. I wanted to really understand how these products came to market and the entire process behind it. So I was like, the best way to do that is to go over to China, go over to Hong Kong, go over to Taiwan, look at the factories, and really get behind the scenes, and I, I I found it to be quite a lot of fun. So we made it. We made a you know a mouse. The first mouse we made was the standard issue, and this is the Phoenix standard issue, which is an upgraded, updated version of the original one that we made that had the Burning Earth logo here. Now, first off, I'll tell you what this mouse is, and then I'll talk about the process of making it. You can just go onto like Alibaba, and you can browse through OEM products, and then you can get something that that you know looks cool, and just brand it with your stuff and have it shipped to Amazon and then start paying money to market it and sell them. But that's not what I did. I found the factories that I made products that I liked and then I looked at what they had and then I went to China to check them out. What I was looking for is something very specific. I had a shape in mind and this is the shape. So we didn't design this because it costs like $60,000, $70,000 to create a mold to design a mouse and I didn't plan on doing marketing so I knew I would not make that money back. Um, and in fact, I didn't want to make like, you know, big cash on this or anything like that. I mostly just wanted to have the experience and make this product for myself and then break even if possible. We have not broken even on the Fennec version because I ordered too many of them, but we definitely broke even and made a little profit on the original version. I really like the shape of the IntelliMouse and this one was almost identical in my hand. And then the big difference here with this one is that I put a good sensor in here. We have the 3310 sensor, which is my favorite sensor. There are bigger, badder sensors out there and stuff with more digits and more numbers uh, and maybe possibly better acceleration and stuff like that. But for my style of gameplay, this is my favorite sensor. It's an infrared sensor. It's flawless. You know, there's no, and it's not like a laser sensor. It's better than laser sensors. The only thing it does not do well is if you do this, it doesn't really respond well. But if you just move around like this, it's perfectly fine. If you want to do this, you have to get the Fennec Swift mouse. That's why it's called the Swift, because it's a little bit faster with a different sensor, the 3360. The 3310 is just as good unless you're doing this. That'll spin out your, you know, that'll spin out your character or whatever. It'll, it'll mess with your game. So don't do that. Anyway, that's the mouse. And I found a company that, that had this, and then we customized it, changed out some of the insides. And I like a heavier mouse. And this is right before Rocket Jump Ninja and the entire industry decided that all mice must be extremely lightweight. And the lighter the weight, the better. So I released this right after that trend. It's about 120 grams, but there are weights inside here that you can easily remove. Whether it's a tiny screwdriver, you have to open it up, but it's because it's a permanent thing. You don't like, it's not like the Logitech systems where you can just pull the weights out and pop new weights in. You can go in and remove the weights on this. Uh, which is what I've done on a couple of my mice, and I got used to that actually, so it's about 90 grams without the weight. And then you'll notice the cord on this is not a braided cable. I cannot stand braided cables. Again, I made this for myself. I like just the reinforced rubber cords because they're lighter weight. And number two, they also don't create any drag on your desk. They don't snag on things as easily and they don't fray. That's why we only use just the rubber cables, uh, rubber cords, whatever, and don't use the, the braided cables, except for on our keyboard because you're not you're not playing your keyboard games like this. <laughs> Nobody plays games like that, unless <laughs> they're weird. So I don't worry about the, the braided cable on the keyboard snagging on anything. Anyway, that is the mouse. Now, in order to find this mouse, I wanted to find the right factory. And, and the criteria I had where I wanted to make sure that the factory wasn't exploited. Well, I mean, everything in capitalism exploits to an extent, but I wanted to make sure there was no child, child labor or anything like that. 
So I went to China and I didn't tell them I was there. They're in Guangdong and I was in Shenzhen. So I was there and I just messaged them the same day a couple of hours and I said, hey, I'm gonna swing by, be there in a couple hours, does that work? And they were like, yes, that works. My, my thinking there was I don't wanna give them any time to like make things look presentable or you know, whatever. I just wanna make sure there's no pretensions that I go there and I just see it as it is. And that's how it felt when I got there. They were able to start making it almost immediately. So while I was still there, I was able to come back and get some video footage of them putting together the actual mouse. And it's an assembly line. You know, it's not mechanical or anything like that. You know, everyone there, I talked to them, they seem to like, like their job. I mean, it's still a job. A factory is a factory, assembly line is assembly line. It's boring work. I guess that's how things get made still this, in this day and age. So we can figure out how to have people um, not have to work and just uh, have robots do everything without all the rich people taking all the profit and giving nothing to everybody else, then I guess this is the way it's gonna be. So anyway, that's how I got this made and ordered a thousand of them. All right, next up, decided to make some of these in white because you know we really didn't have to pay any extra money to get like a glossy white version. So part of the order, a couple hundred of these things were made in white. There's not many of the white ones left. Now let's talk about the other mouse. But basically I just found another design that I liked. This one's a little bit more right-handed and I wanted to make something a little bit smaller that had the 3360 sensor, which is you know, preferred by some people. So that's what this one is. It's, they're both very similar in features. And we did one other thing that not a lot of companies do. And that is we created a special system for changing the LED colors on the mouse without having to use any external software. You hold on the back button and the scroll button for about five seconds like this. And now it's blinking, it's telling us that, hey, we're in RGB adjust mode. So the DPI button, or the CPI button, is going to change the colors. So you pick the color you like, and then once you're done, you can change your mode. Right now it's breathing, as you can see, breathing slowly. So pressing this over in the side, make it go to, let's rainbow mode. And then that's just a static mode with the color that you selected. Once you're finished, you press the back button and that sets it. So that's all you need. Now let's say you uh, just cannot stand color, makes you want to tear out your eyes, that's fine. Just hold on the uh, CPI button for a few seconds and it's gone. At this point I was having a little bit of fun because I really enjoyed going over there and checking out different hardware and meeting people. And I was enjoying the entire behind the scenes thing more than making the hardware. Like I believe this is made in the same factory as I forget what the company is, game something, I don't remember, but there's similar versions of this online with some different features. Uh, I decided to go with the just straight up wireless, not Bluetooth. And there's a few reasons for that, but uh, there's generally a slightly, uh, slightly less latency this way. But one thing I wanna, wanna say about this is the wireless requires direct line of sight. So if you plug up your USB dongle to the back of your computer, it may be a little bit weird. You need to plug it up to the front or plug it up to a USB device on your desktop or something like that. You need line of sight, but you can be back quite a bit, but you need, as long as you have line of sight with the actual USB dongle, you're totally fine. So that's a little bit different than Bluetooth in that way, but it has a little bit better latency. So there, that's, that's the, the different trade-off that I decided to make with this. Is that the right decision or not? You let me know in the comments. Would you rather have slightly, slightly more latency? I mean, it's almost, not enough for most people to detect. And I also think the Bluetooth connectivity on and off thing gets a little bit annoying, but this one you just plug it in and it's like plugging up a USB device. So when you get one of these, make sure it's fully charged. Like charge it for like eight hours first. After it's fully charged, you can use it for many, many, many hours without worrying about it. But what I've taken to doing, which is kind of goofy, but I, I always forget to charge mine. So I just plug mine in to USB 
and have it charging all the time while I'm using it. Because you can have it plugged up to USB and it'll still use the USB dongle as its Wi-Fi, you know, or wireless, I mean, it's wireless connection point. All right, now the next thing I wanna talk about is our mouse pads. I went to several different mouse pad manufacturers to check them out. And the one that I found that seemed to have the best quality wasn't an official mouse pad manufacturer. They were a rubber company. They were working on a big order for Dell and they were like, shh, this has been many years, so. They're an OEM, so I don't know if anyone's gonna find out who they are, I don't know. But they also had um, samples from SteelSeries and Razer, like on their walls that they'd worked for in the past. So they OEM for a lot of different companies. And I was very picky, I picked the type of microfiber that I like for the top, and I picked the thickness of the rubber, and then the braiding on the sides for all of these. And you know, I really should have thought of you. They did have a lot of the, the anime boob ones. I should have gotten a few of those for you. I'm, I'm sorry, everybody. I should have done that. But anyway, these I'm going to do 70% off because I can't take these with me. That makes me sad because I love these mouse. I'm going to take it up for me because these are my favorite mouse pads. I've got desk mats. We've got mouse pads. we got all the different designs. But I'm doing 70% off until they're gone or until I move. In which case, does anybody else want to do the fulfillment for me? Because I don't have room to do these things. And I'm not going to send these to a fulfillment house because they charge per item for storage. And I just, it's sad, but yeah. And this company was also in Guangdong. The reason I really did this was to kind of be like a gonzo journalist and go explore and find all these things. And, and I really got into the whole culture behind the people who make these things. The engine that drives all of this sort of stuff. I mean, a lot of these companies are purely based on profit, but when you have someone who comes in there and demands a certain quality level, what they'll do is give you the best price they can for that quality level. So I ended up paying a little bit more per unit because I wanted higher quality um, and I picked the best components for different things and I switched out them and I was like, I want different switches and I want custom firmware and I was very picky about a lot of this stuff. I probably, I realized about a year into this that I could have put, in a, put a patent on that, um, the firmware that we created because it was a sort of a novel thing, but I didn't do it. But if anybody else tries to put a patent on it, I will attack them with tanks and fireballs. I really, really, really like going to China and I miss it since COVID. So it was a good excuse to go, like a good business trip excuse to go over there and like check out some stuff. But I don't think I'm gonna make any more stuff after this batch of hardware sells out unless there's a lot of people who just really want that standard issue design because I don't I don't think I'm going to improve the shape any more than this like this is maybe I'll be able to one day get something even better than this but this is in my opinion like the perfect shape so I don't feel like a real need to improve on this we could try a different sensor on the inside but again, this one works so perfectly for my FPS games and stuff that I don't feel the need for it. The only thing I might change was just make a version that doesn't have any weights by default. So it's just like 90 grams instead of, you know, over a hundred and something grams. This is what I want. This is my mouse right here. I'm gonna keep a box for myself so that for the rest of my life, whenever I need a mouse, I'll just go over and grab one. <laughs> so I really made this for me and you can benefit if you like by grabbing one for the, the deal here. Um, do you think I should keep making this stuff? I mean, I feel like there are enough companies out there making this. And we don't need any more companies making it. And I don't know if we're doing anything special other than that, that novel firmware. And I do like our product the best. There's so many things. And the funny thing with me when it comes to these hardware cycles is every time a company comes out with a new mouse, they have to hype it like this is the best thing ever because they want you to buy it. Even if you bought a mouse eight months ago when they released the the hyper thing well now they've got the uber hyper thing and it's like okay well you bought the hyper thing and that had a 3360 sensor top of the line perfect when it first came out it was like this is the perfect sensor 10 out of 10 reviews will make your game better you will have sex more if you buy this thing and then there's like oh this has got the 3388 sensor or whatever the next one like the uber hyper came out eight months later with a different sensor and it's like 3360 it's garbage it's for virgins no one wants it it's you can't use it if you try to use it you won't be able to shoot anything you're going to miss every target but if you buy this new one that we just released guaranteed you'll be having sex again you know your your kdr through the roof guaranteed that's the way it feels with this stuff when really I've been using this one for years and years and years, and I don't need to upgrade. There's really, you get the one you love, 
and use it until it disintegrates in your hand. And luckily I haven't had any of these disintegrate in my hand. And I also decided not to go with the rubberized coating because after a couple of years that gets sticky and gunky. It doesn't have a long shelf life. A lot of the old razors used to have that. They're all gooey and gunky now. Find me an old death adder that had that rubberized coating that's not gooey and gunky. I'd like to see that probably for someone using it in Antarctica. Anyway, so that's how it is. Let me know what you uh, think of our products. Grab them while they're on sale. Enjoy. See you later.